Today is the great feast of the Incarnation, Christmas, and this is the third Mass during the day. And the epistle is taken from Blessed Paul, the Apostle to the Hebrews, chapter 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, last of all in these days, has spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the figure of his substance, and upholding all things by the word of his power, making purgation of sins, sitteth on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath inherited a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels hath he said at any time, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee, and again I will have I, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, <coughs> he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God adore him. And to the angels indeed he saith, He that maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. But the Son, thy throne, O God, is forever. And ever. A scepter of justice is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved justice and hated iniquity. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou in the beginning, O Lord, hast found the earth, and the works of thy hands are in the, are, are the heavens. They shall perish, but, they, but thou shalt continue. And they shall all grow old as a garment, and as a vesture shall, shall, shall thou change them. And they, shall, and they shall be changed, but thou art the self same, and thy years shall not fail. In the continuation of the Holy Gospel. According to St. John, chapter 1. In, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, all things were made by Him, and without Him was made nothing that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men, through him, might believe. He was not the light, but was to bear witness of the light. That was the true light, which enlightened every man that cometh unto this world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. To them that believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Here I'll kneel. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt amongst us. And we saw his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. <clears throat> in the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. And we were made the sons of God. Today we celebrate a most special feast, that feast of the Incarnation, the Incarnation which means the taking on of the human flesh, when God himself took on human flesh. <clears throat> when Adam sinned, the gates of heaven were closed for all eternity to man. It was by that great act of pride, the act of pride on first on the part of Satan, 
right? This was the greatest act of pride, the greatest sin of pride, so followed by the great sin of Adam, that act, that sin of pride. The one thing the devil was not counting on, because he himself could not comprehend it, nor could he lower himself to asking forgiveness of God. Adam had the humility, which Satan did not, to ask for forgiveness for committing the grave sin against God. And it was God, in his mercy, that he granted, he, gave, he, he made a promise to Adam that he would send his only begotten son to redeem us. <clears throat> the gates of heaven were closed for all eternity to man. And we call it the happy we call it the happy fault. Oh happy fault of Adam, who wrought our Redeemer to come. It is a theological opinion that if Adam had not sinned, God would not have become man. <coughs> it's, it's a pretty common uh, theological opinion. And so we call it the happy fault of Adam because it was through that fault that God took on human flesh. Now, with that great act of pride and disobedience that Adam committed, it was through a great act of humility, both on the part of God and also the key to this whole picture, the Blessed Virgin Mary. It was through Our Lady's humility in accepting to be the Mother of God, when, when God asked Our Lady through his messenger, the Archangel Gabriel, he asked her if she would give him a man. God, if he were to create another man and, and, and to put his only begotten son in that other man that he had created after the creation of Adam, that would be useless because God had to take on the, human, the, the, the corrupted human flesh. He had to take on man who had fallen. He had to take on his flesh. And he, did, he couldn't just create another man. I mean, he could have, but it, 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 for us, it, it, would, it would not bode well with us, right? If God were to create another man, how would that make us feel or even look at it? That wouldn't work. So God asked Our Lady to give him a, a man, to give him a son. And so Our Lady, in her great humility, in her, in her will to do the will of God, accepted to be the mother of God. And in so doing, she allowed God to come here upon earth in the form most <coughs> fitting. If God were to take on human flesh of a man fully grown and in, in, of, of, of his, in, in his right years of 33 years old, we would never be able to approach him because of his awe, because of, of, of through, through great fear. Through the great fear of the omnipotence of God, we would not be able to approach that man of God. And so it was most fitting that God should come to us in the form of a child, in the form of an infant, one who cannot live without the help of another, without the help of his mother. So God took on human flesh as a baby whose little feet could not even hold up the, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, that, that divine person who shared with, the, with, the, with the, the humanity there. God humbled himself to come in a most, the most vulnerable manner, the most vulnerable any human can be, is as an infant who cannot live without, without help from another. So let us turn to our Blessed Mother. She was the key that opened the gates of heaven. Heaven was truly closed for all eternity. It is another theological opinion that if Our Lady had rejected, if Our Lady had said no to becoming the Mother of God, there is a question raised that God most likely would not have asked anyone else. He most likely would not have come. That would have been it. And so it was that, that pivotal point for all of humanity, for Our Lady accepting the will of God, Our Lady accepting to be the Mother of God, 
So let us turn to Our Lady and ask her to help us to accept the will of God in our lives so that we may follow the will of God to do it, to, do, to conform our will to the will of God so that he may use us for his glory, for whatever, for whatever he may need us to do. So let us turn to our Blessed Mother, who is the key to our salvation. She allows us to go to heaven. By her humility, by her fiat, by her accepting the will of God, she let every single one of us go to heaven. It was her act of humility that allowed us the opportunity to go to heaven. Heaven was closed. Heaven was locked shut. But it was through her humility, her goodness, that she accepted to be the mother of God, even though she did not quite understand completely how that would be. How, how, how was that possible? That she should be the mother of God. She was a virgin, a consecrated virgin to God. She was she she would never she would never have a, a natural born son through the natural causes. That was impossible. She had vowed a sacred vow to God to be a virgin all of her life. And she wasn't going to break that even for God. Because of how important that vow was. It's a serious vow. She would not break it even for God. And so she did not quite understand it. But she knew that God would not well, obviously make her break that, that vow. But she gave her will. She conformed her will to the will of God by accepting to be the mother of God. So let us turn to the Most Blessed Virgin Mary, asking her for that grace, that strength, to persevere in the will of God for us. And with that, I wish you all a very uh, blessed and Merry Christmas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.